Now it's time to put our project into Git or use Git version control. Um, so this is not the only type of version control, but it is one that's very useful and one that happens to be used by Heroku as well as Amazon Web Services. So that's what we're gonna be doing now. And if we look at that deploying Python and Django article that we've already been going through, um, it, it's already saying stuff about Git. And another thing that I wanted to mention is it said stuff, this warning about no ENV file found. Well, Heroku Local allows you, so if you look at the article of Heroku Local, allows you to now put in two environment variables that you can actually use locally. It's not something I'm gonna do because I'm, I don't need to do it because we've already done all the things that we need. Um, you definitely don't wanna put your live values in here. There's a different way to do that and it shows you how to do it specifically um, in here just like this. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna jump back into the actual deployment guide and we see that it says how to keep build artifacts out of Git. So the first thing before I even start my Git project, I'm gonna add these this Git ignore file. So opening up Sublime Text, I'm gonna go into the root of my Django project where we're gonna be deploying from and I'm gonna make a new file in there. So in SRC, it's just dot git ignore. We say enter, and yes, we wanna do it exactly like that. So dot git ignore is the file that we wanna call it. And then I'm just gonna copy everything in here and paste this in. So this is not necessarily the best git ignore file. Um, so we can actually get a better git ignore file. So Python git ignore file. And GitHub actually has one that's a little bit better for us. So I can just come in here and raw, copy all of this and paste it in here. Um, so that allows us to just have a very more comprehensive uh, Git ignore file than the one that Heroku lists. Um, it does have a lot of the same sort of stuff, but in our case, it's definitely there as well as that .env file. Heroku tells you definitely not put that in there. Okay, so now we've got this git ignore and I'm gonna go ahead and close out my Heroku local with control C and I'm gonna clear everything out, list it all out. And we see that we have everything here. If I do ls.all, um, I do see everything that's inside of this actual folder. It has a few different things that you might have not seen with just ls. If you're on Windows, you probably see all of them, but I've got git ignore and ds store. So I'm gonna go ahead and create my GitHub repository or my Git repository by doing git init and press enter. Notice it says initialize empty Git repository inside of here, inside of the SRC folder. If I do ls-al for all, I now see that there's a .git folder here. If for whatever reason I needed to remove that and start fresh, I just do rm-rf.git. And now I do git status, it goes away. So I do git init again, and then git status. Now I have all the things that I need to add. .ds store is something that we wanna add to our GitHub, um, our git ignore. I'm gonna put this at the very top and save that in there. Now we do git status and it goes away, which is good. Okay, so I've got everything for my project, except I'm not quite ready to actually add this into my project because of our settings file. So this is the main thing that we actually wanna update. Our settings file right here works really well for our local environment. It does not work really well for our production environment. And when it comes to launching things and testing things, it's nice to separate our settings file from a local environment and a production environment. And that's actually what I'm gonna be doing here. So inside of this uh, cur folder, we're gonna make a new module called settings. And then I'm gonna make a couple of files in here. First one is init to make it an actual module. I can go ahead and close that one. And then next one, I'll call it local.py. And then the next one after that, I'm gonna say production.py. Okay, so my original settings, I'm gonna rename it to being old settings. So there's no confusion on the settings at all because this is now a settings, mod, uh, settings Python module, it's as the old one was. And these old settings, I'm gonna go ahead and copy the entire thing and bring it into local. And then in production, I am also gonna paste that entire thing in there. I'm gonna do another change though, and that is I'm gonna change debug to being false, and I'm gonna get rid of these tur URLs. 
Okay, this is of course in production. And then we're gonna scroll down a little bit and our default redirect URL is no longer tur5000, it's now cur.co, not, not com, but co. In my case, your domain is might be a little bit different. And then the parent host is cur.co. Okay, so we save that. And that's pretty much the main changes we have here. We might wanna change the database at some point, but right now this is pretty good for us. So inside of my init file, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do from dot production, import all. And then if the production, and then I'll also add in a try block from dot local, import all. And then I'll just say accept, pass. Okay, so let's go back in here and we do get status. Nothing seems to have changed, but the things that have changed is how the settings are. We can run the server or just even do Heroku um, local again. Let's just press up a couple times, Heroku local web, and we can run that local server. And here, let's go to 5,000, and it should actually have ours coming through, but it's not. It says no such table, Django session. Huh. Well, this has to do with our production and the base directory. We changed where these files live, meaning they're in a new module. They're inside of a new module instead of being where the old settings were. So we actually have to add something to this base directory. So we paste that in here, paste that there. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy that same thing and put it into local and paste that same thing there. We save it and that should, that should fix our little error. We refresh, error goes away. Um, the reason again has to do with where this base directory was. We put it, we put these files into a new directory, which mean means that this went off, just went off a little bit on both production and local. Okay, so we've got this now. Let's go back into our actual project and we see that we can add some stuff. But before I do that, I want to update my git ignore file to ignore that local.py file. That is the reason why we have this try block here is because we don't want the local file on our production server at all. So this is allowing us to do that. By putting this into a try block, it will allow us to just completely ignore that local file. So in our git ignore, what I wanna do in here is cur settings local.py. All right, so cur settings local.py. If you had other local files, so this is also for if you're working on a team, I would say just in um, settings.py. So me, my settings, I would copy all that and paste that in here. And that could be another thing that I ignore from the actual deployment, just in settings. But on my own local computer, I could just jump into that init file and just add my own one in there as well as Justin settings. That makes it really, really easy for me to pass this project around and not really worrying about everyone's settings, especially with that production stuff. So in the git ignore, this allows me to ignore those things so they don't ever go to Heroku. So now let's go ahead and close out the server again. I'll do git status and it seems like everything's in there okay. I'll do git add dash dash all so this is adding everything in, he in here ready for our database. And I'll do git, git commit dash M and I'll say all files for initial commit. So you basically dash M is a message. So you're writing a message about the commit itself. I'll press enter. Notice it did all of this stuff, create mode for a bunch of things. And if we look into our settings module, so let's look in here. So we've got cur. And then we have settings in here and it's in it, settings and production. Local and Justin settings are no longer in there. They're not in there at all. This is good. That's exactly what we wanna see and that's how we want it to, to run. The reason I knew the paths to write has to do with how our app is. So our Git repository is inside this SRC folder. So relative to this SRC folder, um, local.py is in cur and then settings and then local, right? And that's how I knew that's where it was. Um, so that is really simply getting our GitHub repository started. So now what we need to do is actually run this sort of thing. So we've got, now we wanna deploy our actual application to Heroku. 
So we want to create an app inside of Heroku. So I'll do Heroku create. And you know what? I'm going to try making an app name. I'm going to call it Kerr and I'll press enter. And that gave me the app name of Kerr, which is really nice. So that means that on Heroku, my app name is Kerr. I co copy that and paste it in here. Kerr is now my app. Kerr.heroku app is now and forever going to be my app. You cannot take it. You could try, but it won't let you. Heroku Create will just give you a randomly named app. That's all. Um, so now that I've got this, I'm going to go ahead and then just do git push Heroku master, press enter. And it's loading, it's building, it's doing some stuff. Things are good. We're probably going to run into an error. I'll explain why. Um, the error has to do with static files, but it is installing Django, it's installing GUnicorn, and then we get this error and it says push rejected to cur. And we can read through this error, but we could really just see um, error running Python manage.py collect static no input. So this, this is being ran by default from Heroku for us. Now we didn't talk about static files, but in other projects we do. And we're gonna go ahead and dis, just disable the, uh, the static files collection. If I wanted to re-enable it, I would say zero here. And that re-enables it, but I want it to be one, so disabled. Okay, and that also restarts the app. Let's try and push it again. I press enter. And it's running, it's running. Python app detected. Good, good, good. So far, so good. It's going to load a second, and then we'll go and check out our app in just a moment. Okay, so our app was completed, and it's now working. So let's go ahead and open, we'll just say Heroku open. So this is to call and open up our app. We get a bad request. Um, there's probably a few different reasons as to why this is. So let's go ahead and do Heroku run Python. Uh, actually, let's do Heroku run bash. So this gives us into the shell of Heroku. So we can take a look at what's going on with our project, or at least try to. I can list everything out and do Python manage.py and let's say run server. Well, the server runs, it doesn't seem like there's any errors. Uh, this is obviously the development server, so that's not really what we want. Um, so I'm gonna go back into, in, I'm just gonna go ahead and exit, and I'll do Heroku log, Heroku logs, and we wanna see them. So I think the problem with this has to do with, well, let's jump into our production settings file. It has to do with allowed hosts. So this current host right here is not allowed from Django, so we get that 400 error. So let's go ahead and add in this current host, which is cur.herokuapp.com. We'll save that, and we'll do get status. Notice the production added uh, was modified, and we'll do get add period or get add dash dash all. They both do the, the same thing thing in this case, and then we'll do git commit, and we'll do update loud hosts, and then git push Heroku master. And while it's doing that, um, I want to actually look up how to do domains on Heroku. So I'll do Heroku domains, just searching Heroku domains, and going into custom domains for apps, click on that. And this is the next video as to what we actually want to have. Um, so we'll actually add in our own custom domain because I have a feeling there's going to be a little bit of a problem with our app. So let's go ahead and do Heroku open again. And we get there. It's loading, loading, uh, looks good. And then it redirects us to cur.co. Um, cur.co has a placeholder, so we're going to have to change this to our actual app. And that's something we'll do in the next one along with custom domains, as well as our own new database that works off of Heroku instead of SQLite, or like a MySQL database instead of SQLite. Okay, so if you have any questions on what we did here, let us know. Otherwise, let's keep going.